Top Don sent me this thermal imaging camera and boy is this thing a lot of fun. They're also sponsoring this video. I'm surprised at how sensitive this thing is. If I touch the workbench just briefly, you can see my handprint on there. Or even if I just uh, rub a piece of wood across the workbench, it leaves a streak just from the friction heat or my fingers just from the heat coming off of those fingers. And now let's go and explore the thermal landscape around here. Walking down the hallway of the house, you can see quite the temperature gradient. 24 degrees near the ceiling, 17 and a half near the floor. And you can clearly see where all the framing is, including this diagonal brace that was put in here. You'd never find that with a stud finder. And you can see the corners are, of course, the coldest, uh, especially near the floor outside corners. If there's ever condensation, that's where it happens. And on this wall, which is not an outside wall, there's a streak here, right along here, and that is from a vent pipe that goes to the toilet, out to the roof, and air always seems to be coming down through this pipe in the winter, which makes it cold. Uh, it's actually cold enough that I can feel, if I put my hand on it, I can feel that uh, this is a bit cooler than this. This is the controller for the uh, floor heat, uh, obviously releasing quite a lot of heat because you can see a streak coming off the top of it. Um, another electronic gadget here, this one controls the heat for the towel rack. Again, it uh, draws quite a lot of heat even with the towel rack completely off. So the living room is quite warm because we got the uh, mini split going. That's that thing right there, but the fireplace is cold because there's less insulation here. And we have a cold spot right here, which is some socks that are drying in the laundry rack. That, of course, the evaporation makes that cold. And in the kitchen, I turned on the electric floor heat, and you can see quite a distinct pattern of where all the lines are. I don't know why they left them so much looser here than other spots. And here's a dark spot. That's because there are some wet boots that were there just a minute ago, and so that kept it cold. And then the windows are nice and bright, but uh, very cold on the infrared. And again, we can see in all the corners where it's a bit cooler. And if we look at the bottom of this door, there's a bit of an extended uh, dark spot here, and that's because there's a slight draft here. In fact, everywhere there's a slight draft, we can see these sort of spots. Um, this door here, it's also slightly drafty. Um, it's warm from the sunshine, but uh, right here, there is a tiny bit of air coming in. I can feel it, and it's heading this way. So once again, a cold spot. And in the mudroom, the dryer is going, and that is just glowing hot, isn't it? And we have, uh, oh, interesting, a cold spot right there. I wonder what that's from. I don't know why the jackets are so warm. Actually, it's not that they're really that warm, it's that the wall is a bit cooler than ambient, yet the jackets are at ambient temperature, and it's just the warmest spot when I have it aimed like this right now. But uh, if I get my hand in there, for instance, now it scales it entirely differently, and now they don't look so warm. It always scales the colors to the range they can see, and if it's a very small range, then it basically makes it really sensitive, like right now. And if I have something really warmish in there, then it scales it way back. So you look at the uh, things hanging there, they don't look so warm. But if I get the dryer out of view, then they're the hottest thing around. Now, let's go in the garage. Oh yeah, see around the door lock, it's cool. And the minivan was parked here, and we can still see a warm spot from the engine where it was parked. The other car we haven't used in a while, and so it is cool, and the sun is shining on the garage door, why it's warm, and look at that, there's a hot spot, those are power adapters for my router that's in the garage, which is also lit up, and the little Raspberry Pi computer that has a camera that watches the outside, and other hot spots, here's another one, a smart switch. And this thing has got an LED in it, which draws a tiny bit of power, so that also makes it hot. The garage door opener has been used recently, and it is warm indeed. And back there, that's actually an incandescent light, which is why there's such a big hot spot around it. And let's go outside, and this will put things on an entirely different scale. 
So we see quite a bit of temperature difference for where the snow is deeper or least deep. Oh yeah, the mini split. Let's have a look at that. And it is indeed cold. What's interesting is that this corner here is so hot next to the chimney, but that's because the light was shining on it. And the line's coming off the mini split because they've got warm stuff going into the house. Fortunately, the electrical lines are not terribly hot. Uh, that's good to know. I guess maybe it's not drawing that much power. We look in the front. There's a hot spot in there. And that's the uh, motor for the fan. Oh yeah, and we've got a warm area here. This is where essentially uh, less insulation from the basement. So that is a bit more warm than other areas. Now here the tree is the warmest thing, the sun of course is shining on it and if we aim up at the sky it is very cold. The sky is basically outer space uh, with a bit of atmosphere in between and uh, heat radiates up to the sky and very little comes back at night which is why it gets cold at night. My shed is quite warm on the front from the sun shining on it. I'm curious what the temperature is inside. Uh, you can see where all the framing is. And a hot spot on the wall from the light shining in. We shoveled the snow off the deck. And Harriet dug a hole in there. Which uh, presently is warmer than ambient. That's because we've had a cold night and so this takes a long time to cool down. The windows are, of course, quite warm because there's uh, heat leaking out of them. Let's see if we can uh, spot anything particular. This is the dryer vent. Oh, I'm sinking in the snow. Window, more windows. The edges of the windows seem to be worse. Let's look under the deck. Oh, so that's the, uh, the wall there. Seems to be the hottest right now, the concrete wall. Well, I shouldn't say hottest, it's the warmest. It's the least cold. There's more heat leaking out the top than the bottom because the basement is fairly cool. The top edge of the window seems to be losing a fair bit of heat. And then the attic vent as well. The attic is well insulated, but with all the snow on top, the uh, roof is also well insulated. And so there is a little bit of excess warmth that comes out that vent. Ah. I'm stomping in here. Look at that, this is my footprints. Clearly the snow deeper down is warmer. It's like I'm stepping in lava. And I was curious about this because there's a cold spot inside right along here. But I don't see a corresponding hot spot along there. Now the front of the house is very warm at the moment but that's all from sunshine. Not from heat leaking out. Sidewalk is warmer along this edge because that's where the sun's been shining on. And yeah, look at how warm those walls are right now. The brick is all uh, warmed up from the sun. So there's more heat coming off the brick than there is off the windows. And I am relatively cold. My pants are warm. Boots are cold. Jacket is warm. Face is warm and cold. It's like red hot inside. And this is where the air comes in. That's of course the hottest. It's a piece of lava that fell out. I've been recording all that using this bracket that I made like this and that way I can attach a regular camera right next to it and film the visible part of light as well. Although synchronizing the video and formatting it so it works in my video editor has been a bit tricky. And you can see this heater on right now because I've been meaning to draw a lot of power in here to show where some of the wires go. I have a second heater on that circuit just to make sure it's maxed out. And you can see the wires are warm, but looking at the wall, you can see where the wire is running behind the wall. And then it's going through the ceiling and clearly lit up. Let's follow it. And it goes here and you'll notice it's warm coming down to the socket because that's where it taps in to the existing circuit and let's follow the rest of it. 
So we can see on the wall where the socket is and the wire goes up through this cabinet behind it into the ceiling. And here we can see a streak going across the ceiling. That's the wire for that circuit that's maxed out right now. Goes to the breaker panel. And uh, it's pretty clear that the breaker is this one here. Let me just put a fingerprint there. Yeah, that's the one. And another breaker that's active right now is this one here where I've got another heater going somewhere else. And in my basement office here, I've got an infrared heater going. And you can notice behind it, it's not very warm. Whereas in front of it, I've got lots of things that are warm, that are illuminated by the heater. And it looks like it's just the light bouncing off of this chair, but uh, it's not. It's basically the chair itself radiating back heat. So if I turn it around, the hot spot is still on the other side. There's also a bit of a warm spot on the ceiling right here, which is from convection from that heater. But I've also turned on the baseboard heater in this room, which is down here underneath this little desk here, and you can see a streak of warm air going pretty much straight up from it towards the ceiling. This heater is not as powerful, but uh, you get the idea. A baseboard heater, the heat just rises to the ceiling and I guess it fills the room with warm air gradually and it comes all the way down. Whereas an infrared heater, it just blasts you with heat right away, which is what I like because I don't have to preheat the room, I just turn this thing on and I feel warm. Looking at this central vacuum unit, it's an excellent illustration of reflectivity and emissivity of different materials. So the top is not terribly infrared reflective, but the bottom, you can really see my hand reflected off of that. But the bottom also has very low emissivity compared to the top. So let's just put a handprint on here and you can see it right away. And if I do the same thing on the bottom, I'll put a handprint on here and we see hardly anything off of that because this is a infrared reflector and also a poor infrared emitter. An even better illustration of this is this piece of tin foil. So I'll just put a handprint on there. And you can see heat coming off of the workbench, but not off the tin foil, just reflections. And if I move it, you can see I did in fact heat up the tin foil and the workbench through it but the tinfoil, being a reflector, is not an infrared emitter. Transparency is also different in the infrared band, so this piece of plexiglass is transparent to light, but completely opaque to the infrared. And, being opaque, it's also an emitter, whereas the tinfoil was not. But this garbage bag is completely opaque in the visible light, but if I stick my hand in there, you can see it's quite transparent in the infrared band. But air is transparent, although I think there must be some impurities in the air because I can see some of it coming out of this heat gun. And if I blow it at something, then that really shows up. Water, it turns out, is infrared opaque. I thought it would be interesting to see what steam coming out of a pot looks like, but actually that turns out to be much less interesting than the gas flame, which just looks like an inferno. So yeah, the thermal world, it's just fascinating. They also have this smaller camera which is meant to plug into an Android phone or tablet, but it can also connect to a PC, and it's almost as sensitive as the bigger TC004 camera, but it only costs 20% less, so I think the bigger one is actually the better deal. Well, I'm sure glad Top Don approached me about making a video about their camera because it's been a fun video to make and I'm sure I'll use that camera in future videos. And as is the case with any sponsored video, there are some uh, discount codes and purchase codes so that if you buy the camera because of this video, they'll know. So use those codes.